I have something called the Empowering Parents Over Testing Act. Mm -hmm. I, if you know me, you do. I, I do not believe that our state tests are really anything good for parents or teachers or even children. Yeah. Uh, the ones I'm talking about here, the, the mandated ones, they're not even graded. They're not graded. They're not part of anything just to try to get data for the um, what I think is a very outdated A to F system, um, school grading system. So we've got lots of problems there. But basically what this bill does, you uh, parents can already opt their kids out of the tests, those tests. Um, it's already protected in the 2001 uh, Parents' Bill of Rights. My bill basically just protects any teacher or counselor or school person who who urges or even mentions opt-outs because right now some of them are telling me that if they do that they get in trouble they have to do it all like hmm. underground you know they're like yeah you can opt your kid out Ooh. because parents do not like the text straight up that's why i call it the uh, empowering parents act um and so that's kind of where that's at right now um it doesn't do anything revolutionary because you can already do that but i'm trying to protect the people that are trying to opt their kids out it's parents too. It protects the parents and it protects the kids if they do choose yeah. to opt out. Um, it says that there can be no you know, adverse consequences or anything to the kids. Not that that always happened, but I'm just trying to make sure people know that that's a priority for me. My other one is really kind of House Bill 2985 is the mm -hmm. Empowering Parents Over Testing Act. Once again, yeah. really I didn't even know. Thing. Yeah, I didn't even know that opting out of testing was a thing exactly why do you think i'm running the bill if it doesn't pass which there'll be some major parent groups i think will be for this i have been reached out to by some education groups but i know that the state department of education is not going to like this one even though they can already opt out but i don't care i'm running it so we can have these conversations and let more people know that absolutely you can do this um plus on my bill too nothing prevents a school from still pushing them, you know, because they try to get that 95% or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say you can't do that. I'm just saying, hey, if parents want to opt out, let them opt out. Don't try any fear tactics or anything like that. So yeah, absolutely. because like, yeah, because I was under the impression this whole time that we had to do those or else we'd get held back or something nope. like that. That's nope. wild. I had no idea. Yep. I didn't no know No grades, that. no hold back. All it is is data. Now it's it's data that's important since the ADAF scale is based on that. Not all the way, yeah. but the pieces of it are, mm -hmm. and uh, that's all it is. And that's why many parents don't like them. Especially this is this is crazy. I have weird bedfellows. I'm Democrat, right? Pretty mm -hmm. progressive, and I've got the farthest right folks reaching out to me, being like, "What is this for those crants?" I'm like, "Oh, you're gonna like this <laughs> because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter far right, far left. Doesn't matter." Parents don't like these ding dang tests because of yeah. the stress that it causes them for nothing. My kids' scores, the ones that were mandated, and they went ahead and took them last year because I mean, I usually opt my own kids out, but at this time I was just like, just take them. It doesn't matter. Um, their scores didn't come in till mid this year from last mm -hmm. year. You want to yeah. tell me how that's going to help my kid learn better or the teacher right. teach better? None of it's going to happen. I'm very, very passionate about that too. Yeah. So this bill was a passion piece as well, but mostly just to have these conversations about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. I think I'm going to mm -hmm. remember that. Not, not saying I'm going to be telling but, people, but no, I'm kidding. I probably will. But no, no that's. No, I, I mean, yeah, so you're a teacher. You're a teacher. Yeah. yeah. Substitute. So me, this yeah. bill would protect you. If, yeah. That, that's okay. But yeah. I'm saying. If this passed, you would be protected to say that. Right now, I mean, I got in trouble myself when I realized as a first year teacher that these tests were a thing. And mm -hmm. I was like, so they're not graded. Why am I, because I didn't really know the system, why am I forcing these kids to do this? Why am I making it sound like it's the most important thing of their lives? Yeah. And they were like, what is that? <laughs> so I had to learn once i really peeled the onion back and i was like well, big testing companies okay i get that um mm -hmm. corporate reform education type stuff i get that too but what the rest of it i don't know so if it passes and you become a teacher you can speak about it i mean i wouldn't be dumb about it you know just like yeah. don't ever take the test <laughs> but if a parent comes to you and says yeah hey, i want to opt my kid out you're like well let me show you how 
Yeah. And it really is very simple too. It really is just a letter to the principal, maybe even the, the superintendent saying, I would, I wish to opt my child out of this test. And they're, that is a protected thing. They're going to fight it. They're absolutely going to fight it, say that it could hurt the school, so on and so forth. But um, again, hmm. if I can't stop the mandates, because they are mandates from the federal government, yeah. then I figured let's empower the parents. It's literally called that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. And that fits in with the tone of how people are feeling lately with education. Um, well, I, dude, we get rid of the tests, watch teachers come back, watch uh, uh, you know parents maybe even bring their kids back to schools because they're not just testing you know factories whatever I'm talking yeah. the ones that either went to private schools or homeschool the reason some of the reasons are religion I understand that some of the other region reasons talk to them talk to parents they'll tell you straight up my kid doesn't like school because my kid sits there and studies for or prepares does test prep and my kid's a second grader and I'm like what I mean oh I can't blame you we yeah. can fix this we can fix this together. So I'm trying to build a coalition once again, but there's going to be lots of pushback because that's the system that everybody's used to. And you know how that worked. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. But my uh, four new bills are one Indian education bill, a collaborative parent and teacher, um, a parent bill of rights, revisions and reforms to make it more collaborative. Um, it gives parents the, um, the ability to find out about election as far as school board elections and bond elections at school and register to vote at their school. Uh, it also gives them more um, ability to opt out of some of the standardized testing and then the benchmark testing and the other data-driven testing that is not required by the state, it's not required by the federal government, um, but even sometimes the ones that are required by the state, you know, I think parents, if they can't get the information they need about those tests, then they may want to, um, they may want to opt out their kid from uh, some of those tests. So have that on the deck. So you're, you said you had a bill that would do what when it comes to the state testing? It would um, let parents well, right know now, that they could opt. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, under state law, te parents can opt out of state testing. It's yeah. under the Parent Bill of Rights. So what I, I just kind of clarified that in, a re in my reformed bill. I just wanted to clarify that a little bit so that parents would know that it also includes like benchmark testing. Um, I don't, do you know what benchmark testing is? I think I do. I remember so having to do it whenever I was in school, yeah. Oh, okay, so yeah, what a benchmark test, I'm sorry, my phone's about to die, so I have to get a charger on it. Sorry. Okay. You're good. Okay, so now it's working. Um, so what the benchmark test does is that it's kind of how a school knows um, how a student is progressing through the year. Mm -hmm. And like the school where I taught at Adams Elementary, they would, um, they did the benchmark, but it, um, some of the kids had to do it like once a month or every two weeks. And so like in first and second and third grade, these little kids were doing these benchmark tests too. And, you know, once every two weeks. And it also impacted how teachers were ranked. And some, some districts rank teachers based on those benchmark tests. And so, um, and let's say like my little kids, like my little three kids, they're not little anymore, but when they were little, you know, you could look and see, okay, Macy knows how to read. She's on grade level. Like she's turning her work in on time. She's making nineties on her papers. She's fine. So why are they benchmarking and testing her every two weeks to make sure she's on track? I mean, it seems kind of, and they hate it. Like a lot of little kids hate it. The the software is old and the voice on the software is 
like robotic sounding. Do you remember that? Was we that had to experience? use we we had to use the books. We didn't have okay. Yeah, we had Some, to they'll do, the books, do them so. on computers now. Yeah, so now they'll yeah. do them on computers, and they have little kindergartner kids on this computer doing these little uh, computer oh. tests. And this one little boy, <laughs> he um, he bit a teacher. He would he he was in the cafeteria and. I'm just trying to tell you kind of, he was like a little bit like a feral cat. He was a kindergartner and a t he crawled under the table at the lunchroom and a teacher went down there to, you know, try to get him out. And he bit that teacher's hand. And anyway, so he ended up on, you know, Miss Bohr and the school counselors um, list of kiddos to like check in with. So I was following him around and, you know, tagging like following him to every class and trying to keep him calm down and I sat down with him at the benchmark when he was supposed to do his benchmark test and he goes oh, I hate this thing and it sounds awful and I'm like well good grief and I put the little headphones on my head and I started listening to it and I'm like oh yeah it does it's like this kind of robotic awful sounding kind of um, voice. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, no wonder. And like, he would like, we'd have kids that would pull the computer onto almost onto the floor and they get, you know, they get real frustrated with it. Yeah. It's, and, um, also what we found out other computer teachers said that one time it was at Irving, this teacher who passed away recently. Um, he, he said um, when he would take the kids to the like computer lab to do actual computer, they just logged on to do their testing. I mean, before they even, it, they're so automatic that computers equal testing mm -hmm. that to learn about programming or to learn, you know, how a computer operates or to even do research on a computer. They're so automated to using it only for testing that um, so those benchmarks become kind of the the the, the tail wagging the dog that they become so much a part of the culture of a school and so much a part of the curriculum that there's a lot of learning that doesn't happen. So if a parent said, "Hey, I don't want my my kids," you know, look, my kids on grade level, we're not even worried about my kid. My kid's making a's and b's and they're reading chapter books and they're fine so i don't y'all don't need to be you know benchmarking my kid anymore because i hate it so let them read a book over here at the library for 20 minutes while y'all do benchmarks yeah um <clears throat> i had jacob rosecrans on the show a couple of weeks ago and he talked about how uh parents are able to opt their students out and I didn't even know that was a thing like yeah I, no I have idea. a form yeah. I, I made a form I, I have I made a form in 2014 that is still being used and I share it on social media and um, it's the google doc form and it says hey school my kid's not going to take the states you know the state test and here's why and, and I don't want them taking these benchmarks and and I quote the parent bill of rights and um, signed it and they send it. It, it about five, five different parents have used it. And once, once the school, and I put my name at the bottom of it, cause I'm a lawyer and if they're going to, you know, but most schools don't advertise that parents can do that. They'll just like, they know that you can. And so if it happens, they just kind of quietly let them do it. And then, cause they don't want a big stink about it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. The parents in Texas got rid of their A to F by opting out in big amounts on those standardized tests. And there were parents in Washington state that opted out enough that they changed their accountability to be less test driven. So um, there's not been any district in the United States that had that has had their federal funding pulled for opting out. That's one of the threats about if you don't do this federal testing, you'll have your federal funds, you know, yanked. Mm -hmm. But hmm. nobody has done that. That's interesting. It's not gotten to that far yet. Yeah. Hmm. 